I am now logged into my Expressway E on my left hand side and what's going to be my Expressway C on my right hand side. Looking at the Expressway E, you can see that I browsed to my home uh, network IP address. Over here, I was able to browse to the fully qualified domain name that I configured for the Expressway C. That's because the Expressway C is already on my lab network. So that fully qualified do domain name is resolvable. And setting up the DNS server to be able to resolve things like this host name is something that I've set up previously in my how to build a CCMP CCIE collaboration home lab video series. Therefore, I'm not covering how to set up the DNS entry for this Expressway C and Expressway E deployment. Another thing to note is that I'm browsing to HTTPS. If you just try to go to the IP address without using HTTPS, you won't reach the web interface. That is a setting that you can change, but by default, you have to go to HTTPS or you won't reach the web interface. Let's go ahead and start setting this up. I'm going to check the box or select the radio button for Expressway E on the left hand side. I'm going to select the option for MRA. Over here, I'll leave it as the C and I'm going to select the option for MRA as well. Then we'll click continue on both screens. And at this point, we need to actually put in our licensing. You can see that on this side, we need the Expressway E license. We don't need that over here because we're setting it up as a C. For those people that aren't customers, they aren't Cisco partners, they don't have an ability to get a license for these different servers. I don't know of a way right now, but I'm trying to, to look around and talk to people to see if there's any way for people who are just studying to get a license for their lab setup. Right now, I don't know that that exists. However, hopefully I find something and I'll be able to, to make it known later on down the road. For now, while I license my server, I'm going to pause the video and I'll resume after the licenses are applied to these two different servers. I now have my release key added to the system as well as my option keys added to the two different systems. Right down here, I'm going to click add keys. I'll do the same on the Expressway C. Once the keys are added, you can see five option keys added, three option keys added. Over here, it says the release key has been updated. However, a restart is required for it to take effect. It says the same here. And most importantly, it says you've licensed this system correctly for the services you selected. I have that on both sides. I'm not going to do the restart just yet. I'm going to hit continue over here and I'm going to hit continue over here as well. You can see the IP addresses and default gateway subnet mask that we added to both of these systems previously. We now have to put in the host name, which this one is HQEXPC. Uh, it says C1, but it's actually E1. I'll copy that out and put it over on the C. Make that a C1. The domain name, let's see if that populates. It does, making things simple. The primary DNS server does not. So this is 192.168. Remember, this one's on my home internet network. So I'm going to give it the 254, which will go to my default, which will go to my router, which is actually the DNS server for all my things on my home Wi-Fi. This side though, we're going to go with 192.168.11018, which is my DNS server for my headquarters site. For now, I'm going to click finish on both of these and we'll get the restart going. Okay, I'm cool with the restart. But when I come back in, I'm going to go and modify that NTP server configuration, which will also require another restart. But I just wanted to get all these settings out of the way and then we'll deal with the NTP once these come back online. I'll pause the recording for now though. The restart is complete and I've logged back in. I'm going to go under system time and I'll do that on the Expressway C as well. I'm going to remove these different NTP references that are on the system by default. I'm going to change this to EST. US Eastern, and I'm going to set the NTP here to be 
my router which I set up to have NTP services running on it. Now I'll click Save. And on the Expressway E, I'm going to set it up to be the same. It won't have access to the NTP server at, at this moment, but once we add the second NIC to this Expressway E server, it will have access to that NTP server. We get a notice up here that the NTP time settings have been saved. On this side, you can see that the that this is the system peer and that it, the reachability for the last time around was good. However, as this goes on, we'll see that there will be more green check marks along here for each time that it's been reachable. I paused the recording to allow some time to go by. You can see that we have a whole lot more check boxes over here that are green, letting us know that it's been reachable again and again and again. But over here, everything is, is still red and we have a lot more system alarms on this side than on this side. What we want to do now is go under System, Network Interfaces, IP. This setting here, you need to have a license uploaded in order to change this setting. I do, and what we'll do is set it to yes. Over here, you can read what it's all about. Now that I set it to yes, I will leave my external LAN interface as LAN 1, which is this interface here. But I will now set this one up to be my internal LAN, which is my HQ server VLAN. This is the IP address that I chose to give it. I'll keep it as .40 since that's the same as the external facing interface, the last octet of the external facing interface at least. And with that, I'll click save. I'll get a notification that network interface settings are saved. However, a restart is required for them to take effect. I'll go ahead and do that right now. And I'll pause the recording while I wait for that restart to go through. The Expressway E is now back online and I've, I've logged in. You can also see that I'm browsing to the fully qualified domain name of the Expressway E. I'm able to do that now because when my machine that I'm, I'm, I'm working on right now, my workstation, when it tries to resolve this fully qualified domain name, it's going to reach out to my DNS server in my home lab. My DNS server in my home lab is going to resolve it to the IP address on my HQ server VLAN, the 192.168.110.40. Now that I've added my second NIC to the Expressway E, I can reach it at that IP address. Not only that, but we should be able to go under system time and we can see here that the NTP server is reachable. Now that I've done all these configurations that I've done so far, I'm going to end this video here because if I start getting into the next configuration, it's going to cause this video to go longer than I want it to go. Therefore, I'll just close this one out here and we'll start the next configurations in the next video.